Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, wherever you might be. It is my great pleasure to welcome Richard Ness, who is a co-organizer of this seminar, and he will twist and shout about quantum groups and torsion. <laughs> and I know that it will be a little bit about the quantum group bound con conjecture. So Richard, the floor is yours, the Zoom is yours, the world is yours, take it away. Thank you. That's uh, giving me really a lot of things, right? <laughs> I'm very generous. <laughs> Almost, yes, you are very generous. Almost too many things. Okay, so uh, thank you for introduction. I apologize uh, that I, I speak as an organizer, but then okay. So uh, as you can see the title, it's about twisting quantum groups and uh, torsion. It's a joint work with Ken De Comer and Ruben Martosen. And uh, I will start slowly. So I will start about talking about quantum groups, right? So, okay, does it work or not? Okay, this way. So just, just some, if you don't know what quantum group is, you can learn about ba basic things. I just want to start with some definitions. So a compact quantum group. So it's cause of two things. A C object, it's a unital C star algebra. And if there is a uh, homomorphism from C of G to C of G tensor C of G, all tensor products are minimal. And the star homomorphism, which satisfies the class relativity condition here. Wait, let, let me see if I can uh, make this thing work, right? So that's class relativity condition and that's non-degeneracy. So class relativity basically corresponds Okay, you get an example about this associativity of coproduct corresponds to a associativity of a product in the group. And this non-degeneracy condition here, really it's a combination of different things with particular, uh, it replaces uh, the notion of inverse of a group element. Now, the actual the origin of quantum groups was really in general, was the question of, uh, a Pontryagin duality. So abelian groups have a Pontryagin dual, which is another abelian group. So non-abelian group does not have a Pontryagin dual as in a group, but has a dual as a quantum group. And then just forget the group and think about quantum group. So given quantum group, there is a dual one, which is a another algebra with coproducts mm -hmm. satisfying these conditions. There are certain things that hold. So the, uh, the dual of quant compact quantum group is a discrete quantum group. So uh, the corresponding star algebra is not unital. That's why I wrote this C0 here. Uh, now, like in classical case, so quantum group has automatic, compact quantum group has automatically hard state. And that's just the condition of, so it's a state on, functions on the group and this condition is just the invariance condition. Uh, we will assume that the state is faithful. For non-compact quantum groups, it doesn't have to be true, but here we can assume that. And have, then, sorry, just a stupid question. Why is lowercase c0? Well, you see example, right? Because it's a non uh, kind of, if uh, g is compact group, then g hat is a discrete group. And, and that's because it's discrete, yeah? Yeah, because it's discrete. And okay. the corresponding algebra would be C0 which you had. Okay, so it's finally right? supported. Okay, that's all. Yeah. yeah, thanks. Now, so we have a state on our algebra C of G, so we can construct the, do the GNS representational sheet to the state, right? So uh, we write down is this Hilbert space. State, is the hard state unique in some sense? For compact quantum group, unique? it's unique. Yes, it's unique. Same uh, as in okay. classical case. Well, that means up to multiplication by a positive real number. It's a state, so there is not much choice, <laughs> right? It is right. unique in this case, okay. right? In general, yes, you are right. So, and that's so. So, uh, this uh, L two space of the state carries the genus representation of C of G. Then the dual one, so G hat, also has a hard weight, but in general, it's a hard weight. And this one is not unique, it's up to a scalar. The corresponding L2 spaces are isomorphic. So uh, the L2 space of a group and quantum group and L2 space of its uh, dual 
are isomorphic as Hilbert spaces. And actually, this isomorphism is really what you should understand uh, the Fourier transform. So where is this identification? OK, this has to behave nicely, right? So this identification here. Uh, now, as said, there is this uh, non-degeneracy condition here, which corresponds more or less to existence of the inverse. So as the result, we have uh, left and right representations of, uh, of G, and we have left and right representation of G hat. So the picture is something like this, right? So uh, there is this uh, L2 space, this Hilbert space. We have left and right representations of C star G, and we have left and right representations of C of G. So in this duality, so this is C of G, this is C of G hat. This is what I call C0 of G hat. So you can think about functions on the group dual, the same as the C star algebra of a group. And it's really, it's really the relation. And the two representations of C of G are left and right. Those two are internally equivalent. And the two representations of C star G, again, are internally equivalent. So this unitary is U and U hat, which uh, conjugate one to the other. Just examples of it, we, are, we know where we are. So suppose we really have a compact group, G. Then the C of G is really C of G, continuous function on the group. Co-product is the standard co-product, delta of F, G comma H is F of G times H. The dual is C star G. Conversely, suppose we start, uh, well, I want a compact quantum group. So I can start with discrete group, but I, ca I can start with a dual of a discrete group. So in this case, C of G will be reduced group sister algebra of the group. It's unital, right? Gamma is discrete group. So it's a unital sister algebra. The co-product is a standard one on a group. And uh, again, the dual of uh, C star reduced gamma is C zero gamma. So these are, and actually it's worth to remember these examples because whatever you do with quantum groups, at least as long as we are in this universe of discrete compact things, you do things for groups, translate into functions on the group and forget that functions commute. If you are careful, you won't make a mistake. Now, Groups have representations, also quantum groups have representations. And the, the way representations go, uh, so a representation, interrepresentation of a quantum group is a unitary sitting in the multiplier order of compacts tensor C of G. Get an example in a minute. I think it's here, right? Yeah. So that's what it looks like, right? So it's a map from, well, it's not really its action, but you get that in some moment. So representations, so it's really the map from G to U of G. This is our U. So it's a representation on a Hilbert space H. Well, the fact that it's a representation, so it's a homomorphism from groups to operators, it translates into this identity. So again, so this happens on the, H tensor L2. Okay, maybe I should use this one. H tensor L2, tensor L2. And uh, this side corresponds to using the product on the group acting here. And this side corresponds to composing uh, representation with the product. So the fact that the representation is a homomorphism translates into this identity here. No, it's just this, no, this is this one, right? It translates into this identity. Now, quantum groups in general, especially the compact ones, but in general, they have a regular representation. So, meaning a representation on our Hilbert space H, which satisfies this kind of identity, except that we'll call it V, okay? So I think it's this one, right? I'll call it V. And has satisfies certain conditions. So 
it's not just a, first of all i i'm thinking about something acting on uh, our h tensor h so l2 tensor l2 so it's unitary acting on this hilbert space now i have left and right representations of the group sister algebra left and right representations of the function algebra so i have to decide what is what so my unitary actually lives in here so i'll choose it so it lives in c star g tensor c of g it's a representation so satisfies this so satisfies uh, well, uh, first of all, satisfies this condition here. There's the fact that there's a representation, and this is the fact that it implements the coproduct. So it's really a unitary which implements the coproduct. So take element of C of G, tensor one, conjugated with V, and you get delta of this element. So remember, the quantum group came with this coproduct here, right? So Visco product came with Visco product. So Visco product is implemented by conjugation by something. The fact that this is a representation, it's uh, one calls it V uh, multiplicative. So this satisfies this identity here. Hey, wait a second. So lambda is a representation, I think. Yes. Lambda is a left regular representation, rho is right regular representation. And what is R? R again, right regular, and L is left regular. But remember, I have two algebras. I have C okay. of G and okay. C star G. Okay, I've got you. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. So lambda rho is for C star G, yep. L and R is for C okay. of G. Okay. So left is Greek, right is Latin, capital. Okay. Yeah, precisely. So remember this picture here, right? This one. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm kind of keeping track of. Now, this V has actually more information. So it essentially leaves in the C star G tensor C of G. So I can pick up elements from C of G if I just use some state on, uh, on B of H to Q the first leg. So things of this type automatically sit in C of G. And then I can use a state on B of H to Q the second leg. And then I am in C star G, right? So these things automatically in uh, C of G and these things automatically in C star G. And they are not just there, they're actually dense. So there's a norm dense set of elements of C of G, which is, can be given uh, obtained from this unitary V by killing the first leg. And there's norm dense subset of C star G, which can be gotten from this unitary by killing the second leg. So uh, in particular, this says uh, something about protracted duality, right? So, so I want some kind of duality between these two algebras. Of course, not all of them, but some dense subsets of these two algebras. And I really mean duality. So one should be somehow dual to, to, to the other. So this unitary gives the duality, right? So. Uh, given two elements given using this uh, unitary V, take tensor product and map it to omega tensor mu evaluated on V. So this is a map from dense, sub from, uh, dense subset here to C. And this actually exhibits uh, in dense subset of C of G as dual of dense subset of C star G and vice versa. And this really corresponds to a Pontryagin duality, right? So product on, on C of G produces coproduct on C star G and coproduct on C of G produces product on C star G. So it's a really perfect version of Pontryagin duality. Now, uh, so we have some this... problems with functoriality, right, Richard, Tomek? Uh, functoriality in what sense? Well, imagine that you have a homomorphism from a group to another, and you would like to treat this. The, the homomorphism between quantum groups are not that obvious. Exactly. Okay. So, 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 so that's different. That's quite a different story. But yeah. It's not quite obvious what's the right category of quantum groups. Yeah, but, but I, I don't think there is even any special idea how one could take, turn this 
Ponchagin dual construction uh, turned into some kind of a functor? No, no, it is it is a functor. Uh, in certain sense, it is a functor, but it's a completely different story. It's a complete, uh, com complicated uh, are story. Are you saying that it's not entirely clear what we should mean by the category of, of let's say, compact quantum groups? Precisely. What is the category of compact quantum groups? It's not quite obvious because uh, there are not that many, it's not that easy with homomorphisms. So the point is that, uh, okay, I will get to that, but uh, the problem is that say, homogeneous space and the action of a say discrete group, doesn't matter compact, but it's, it's easier to talk about discrete ones here, yeah, right? So homogeneous space for a discrete group is a quotient, gamma mod h, right? The homogeneous uh, space for a quantum group is, a, is not a quotient, it, it, uh, does not necessarily correspond to, to some subgroup. Yeah. So you know what the homogeneous space is for a quantum group, but you but does not. But the uh, homogeneous spaces and subgroups uh, do not really relate to each other. And this is what pod made Podlesh famous. Mm, yeah, kind, yeah, essentially. Yeah, no, no, no. The problem is that sub uh, there are kind of not enough subgroups, mm -hmm. not enough quantum subgroups of a quantum group. So this is a wrong notion. Mm -hmm. But uh, how, how does that relate to the issue of what is the category? Uh, you don't say, have morphisms, uh, so you don't have morphisms. It's not obvious what, what the no, precisely. Okay. Um, it's, um, okay, it, it goes into the fear of subfactors, but uh, maybe not quite at the moment, right? So. I'm sorry, <clears throat> at least for iso for, for the notion of isomorphism is no, no 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 isomorphism is isomorphism that's that's trivial but homomorphism is not obvious what it is so it's not obvious how to construct the category of quantum groups yes but if you start with um, a discrete group you can consider two different kinds of um, quantum groups, the reduced one and also this universal one. And these are mm -hmm. not isomorphic. Uh, that's not the problem. No, no, but that's not the problem, right? So, so yeah, it's the same problem. thing for quantum group. There's a reduced one and there's a universal one. Mm -hmm. So there is a reduced one because it comes with the uh, hard weight, right? So there is a representation on the, on the L2 and L2 space with respect to the hard state. Yes, but and there is also a universal representation, so also universal one. So there are different versions of uh, discrete, at least discrete quantum group. For, for compact ones, no, but for the discrete ones, there are different versions. There's reduced, there's universal, as sister algebras are concerned. Oh, okay, but, okay? Like but the group to... itself, no. Problem is different. Problem is what's a subgroup of a group. Okay, but still for okay. this reduce and this universal, we would like to think of them as uh, being the, the same quantum group. Or not. The quantum group is the same, yes. The uh -huh. quantum group will be the same. Mm -hmm. As okay. such, quantum group comes with its regular representation. Okay. And once you have this regular representation, afterwards you can construct the universal representation. But quantum group itself is the same. But it's not obvious what's a map between two quantum groups. Okay, thank you. Which is a different story, right? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, wait a second. I mean, it's a C star algebra or homomorphism that commutes with the co-product. I mean, what's wrong that's, with that? Uh, that's because not enough of those. That's what? Oh, there's not there enough. There are not of them. enough of those, no. Uh, okay. okay. That's too strict, you mean? that's? Too it's too strict. strict, yes, precisely. Uh, it's too strict. So for instance, Paul, if you take SUQ2, the only subgroup you'll have will be subgroups of the classical circle. <laughs> Okay, all right. But there are lots of different uh, homogeneous spaces. Exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's an inter it sounds to me like an interesting issue. Okay. It's a good issue, but nobody somehow seems to have uh, really solved. Okay, so let's continue. So we have this quantum group. So it, act, it can act on sister algebras, and that's kind of our main subject. So by definition, action of quantum group on a sister algebra I think on this one, it's just homomorphism from A to A tensor C of G. 
and again satisfies this associativity condition and non-degeneracy condition. And if you don't see what it is, think of it this way. If it's a group, a G, a real G is really a group, then this is just the standard map. So A maps to function from G to A given by G goes to G of A. Okay. Maybe I want black one. G goes to G of A. That's my function from G to A. Richard, can I ask if, you? It's yeah. Nice. So you can take for A C of G itself back, no? Yeah, sure. And you then there will be not too many actions also. That's what you want to say. There are not too many star homomorphisms. No, 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 no. There are lots. Any, 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 any action of the group on an algebra produces, this is a homomorphism. From A... Yeah, we have not too many functions. star homomorphisms. From... Quantum groups to quantum groups. And here are tens of... Ah, no. Groups. From quantum groups to quantum groups. No, that's correct. Yes. So if A is C of G, there will be a lot of... Star action, well, not too many. Uh, there is one, there is obvious action, there's regular representation. Okay, yes, of course. Right? Yeah. To begin with, right? But in principle, no, no, there can be, uh, no, there, there are not necessarily that many homomorphisms. That's true. Okay. And all, of course, uh, you, you have a point. So homomorphism from C of, so I've got this two tensor product, right? So yes. tensor C of G, right? Tensor itself, right? Yes. If it's mm -hmm. not commutative algebra, if it might be difficult to construct such in general, right? Okay. Except the trivial ones. It's okay. the kind of obvious ones. Okay, thanks. Now, it's, if it's a group dual case, I think this one works, right? So it's if, remember, we had the compact quantum group where we took dual of a discrete group then the corresponding action of gamma hat of a dual of discrete group is what's called gamma grading. So algebra splits into direct sum of elements uh, uh, indexed by group elements and the product in the algebra is uh, consistent with the product of group elements. Richard, before we change the slide, maybe it's worthwhile to mention that the second condition called by some people the published condition, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it just means that the neutral element, classically it means that the neutral element of a group acts by identity on your space. Yeah, essentially, yes. So, so, so you have yeah. T, X, T. Yeah, yeah, essentially, yeah, essentially, yes. Well, of course, you don't have group elements, remember. Exactly, so, yeah, yeah, surely. So but that's a very beautiful and them. subtle condition, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. Now, as the subject, so, so we had representations. So groups have projective representations. So I also want quantum groups to uh, think about projective representations of quantum groups. There's good reason to thinking about them. We'll get to that later, right? So, so a projective representation, so projective representation of a group is real action on compact operators. So uh, in analogy definition, a projective representation of quantum group, say compact quantum group, is an action on B of H. So it's a map from B of H to B of H tensor element of G. Actually, maybe I should have said something. So all these pictures here are with, uh, what's the word, continuous functions, C star algebra. Now these things are represented on L2 space and take, can take with closure, take corresponding phenomenal algebras. So uh, instead of C of G, I can think about L and of G. And instead of C star G, I can think about the L of G. So the representation, uh, we close of a regular representation of a group. And all these definitions that I had can be also made in terms of this phenomenal algebra, in this phenomenal algebra case co-products, non-degeneracy, conditions as, sorry, that was not supposed to happen. Uh, conditions are somewhat more complicated, but uh, you can term it in terms of these uh, phenomenal algebras. And now here, here's an action on a, just an, so this was definition of action on the C star algebra. 
right? Now, uh, I want an action on a von Neumann algebra instead. So it will be mapped from von Neumann algebra to B of H tensor L infinity of G instead of C of G L infinity of G. And this is a measurable projective representation. It will be a continuous projective representation if it's a, if I can actually use uh, instead of B of H just compact operators, K tensor C of G, this one. So this will be a continuous projective representation. They are different for, also for compact quantum groups. Uh, so one has to be careful. And uh, well, maybe I want to remove it because uh, it's in, not in place. And now there is the standard question. If you think about representation, uh, projective representation of a group, it's all, always implemented. So uh, it's really a representation and the product is preserved up to a cycle. So it's a representation up to a cycle. Uh, now, uh, this is a in this case, it's a definition. So, so such a projective representation of compact quantum group is, or in general of, of quantum group is cleft, it's called cleft, if it's implementable. So it can be implemented by a unitary. Uh, Richard, can I ask you, so uh, yep. how would this relates to cleftness of this principal boundaries in the terms of is, it's the same. Is it the same notion, okay. It's the same notion. Another language, okay. Yeah, that's where this notion comes from, actually. But that's where terminology comes from. As far as I'm concerned, this means implementable, yeah. Okay. okay. And so this is, con this is this implementability condition that can be implemented by conjugating with a unitary in a B of H tensor infinity. And so, it really means that what? It means we have two maps from B of H to B of H tensor infinity. One is our action and one is just identity. And this says that these two star homomorphisms are conjugate. So there's a unitary which conjugates one to the other, right? So there's this U add U, which conjugates one to the other. Can this be formulated in terms of C-star algebras or? Uh, well, no, no. So, so a problems, if it's a measurable representation, then no, then it's in terms of phenomenal algebras. And in general, even for projective representations, you, uh, uh, of a group, you might end up with phenomenal algebra. Simply because, the, well, if you've got projective representation of a group, there is a cosaiku, but this cosaiku is not necessarily continuous. It's only measurable. That's why it's, uh, it's measurable. So it's in these terms. Right. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Now, just just to start somewhere, for a compact quantum group, every representation, projective representation, is well implementable. It's cleft. So, given a, a compact quantum group when uh, there exists such a unitary. You have to work a bit. It's not, it's not quite obvious. It's easy when B of H, when H is fine dimensional. So if you've got fine dimensional representation, it's not difficult to see that the two, that these, these two star homomorphisms are equivalent. But in general, it's a bit more complicated. Okay. Uh, Richard, I have an important question. You see, in Hofgalois theory, you distinguish between cleft and smash. So uh, you distinguish between a cleaving map, which is simply unital and equivariant, and between a map which is uh, collinear and an algebra homomorphism. So uh, when you hear say cleft, you really just generalize the cleftness from Hofgalois. It's really cleftness from Hofgalois, yes. And if you would like to have a stronger it's, condition it... uh, to have a smash, like non non cycle uh, trigger co cycle, just how would you and see it in terms a... of unitaries and? Uh, Oh uh, yeah, well, this will come well. The point is, of course, that given this unitary, mm -hmm. so given this representation, this cleft representation, mm -hmm. then you can construct it to cosaiku. Okay, and then you can check whether it's trivial or not. Precisely, you can construct it to cosaiku. So mm -hmm. the point is that if I've got such a projective representation, uh, yeah, base, uh, so 
Okay, first of all, a tuko cycle is just a tuko cycle. So you think about what tuko cycle in a group is and you write it down as a function on G cross G. So in C of G tensor C of G and forget that things are commutative, mm -hmm. right? So that's the condition for tuko cycle. And in general, it sits in L infinity tensor infinity. Mm -hmm. So in, this, in for Neumann algebra, right? Mm -hmm. Even for a compact for SU2. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's continuous if it sits in C of G tensor C of G. Sorry, can I ask you? Sure. Um, by by trivial cycle, you mean uh, zero, uh, trivial cycle or cohomologous to trivial? That's the next line here. Also, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> So there is an equivalence relation, okay? So two cycles are equivalent if there is a unitary with such that uh, they satisfy this condition. Again, it, it's just, uh, it just says that X trivializes. Uh, so X goes from omega one to omega two. And cosycle is trivial if uh, it is trivial in this sense, if it's equivalent to one, right? In this sense, that's trivial, right? So you have a you given, and actually given this projective representation, this Yoko cycle, it's on the nodes, right? You just write it down. So you write down this identity, or rather you look at this one and you check that these two sides differ by something in infinity tensor infinity. Okay, you have to do something, of course, but it's not difficult to check, right? So that, that this difference here actually leaves a, so it is leaves in here and satisfies this identity. Okay, so given projective representation, which is implemented, so cleft representation, there is a cycle automatically. And we would, well, we this will say that U is omega representation, representation of associated to this cycle, right? Oh. Now there is given a cosaiku, of course, if cosaiku can be trivialized, then it then then it's just a bad luck with choice of you, right? But in general it cannot be, right? So so the next one is what? So like the quantum group has this fundamental representation, this regular representation, this fun fundamental unitary. The same thing happens for a twisted projective representation. So given cos cycle, this defines a unitary and this unitary defines an omega representation. So given omega, there is a omega representation, which is a regular twisted representation. Once I have that one, so like we have a group C star algebra for a group, for quantum group, it's best, uh, remember the group C star algebra was looking at so the idea was we look at V, which sits in uh, C star G tensor C of G. And I recover C star G by killing these things using normal states on B of H, right? Well, I will do the same thing except not to V, but to V omega. And this produces the twisted group C star algebra or twisted quantum group C star algebra. Okay. So now regularity about these projects of these projective representations of compact quantum groups. So as I said, there are cosycles which are not continuous. There are continuous cosycles and not continuous cosycles. So remember, there's a question whether it sits in C of G tensor C of G or whether it's L infinity tensor L infinity. So the basic result about that one is the following. So two cosycle is, well, either it's, it's con uh, so G admits a continuous representation. So map from uh, K to K tensor C star, K tensor C of G. It admits a finite dimensional twisted uh, projective representation. Every irreducible representation is finite dimensional, uh, or every representation is uh, irreducible representation is finite dimensional. So these uh, two cosycles are for compact quantum group are either very nice or very bad. If it's a nice continuous one, every irreducible twisted representation is finite dimensional. If it's not a continuous one, 
uh, none of them are finite dimensional. Well, if if I've got a co regular cosigue, I would call it for finite type. So it admits finite dimensional omega representations. Uh, there's also more than that, so we slightly in analogy, it's not quite the same, but in, a bit in analogy to uh, this standard group. So if I've got a cosicle on G, then I can define a new locally compact group by twisting by cosicle. Note that even if G is compact, this new one, this twisted one will not be compact. In general, I cannot make sure that I end up in C of G tensor C of G. So there will be a quantum group, locally compact quantum group, but not necessarily a compact one. Sorry, is this non-trivial also in the classical case? Uh, sure. Okay. And do you have an example of such a twist of a classical group? Well, there are cosicles. Uh, let me think if you have a non, uh, yes, if you have a non continuous cosicle, mm -hmm. in general, cosicles on, on uh, say, C, uh, SU2, for example, are not continuous. Mm -hmm. General con cosicles are not continuous. So, they to, if you want to construct a cosicle, um, okay, it's not, it's not a good example, SU2, but if you've got, let's say, a compact group with non trivial H2, right? So, you can have non-trivial elements in H2, which are not continuous. Mm -hmm. And apropos, so this, this is a this twisted compact, twisted quantum group is compact if only if omega is of finite type. And then it's automatically continuous. Then of course it's continuous, yes. That's best by, by this result here. So that's really basic results about projective representations. Now, kind of the reason why it is interesting is, uh, well, Bancon, so Paul and Alan. So let's say something about that one, okay? So, and now, uh, my, now I'm just thinking about local compact quantum group. It does not have to be compact anything. It will compact, become compact later. So like in standard, in for groups, there is this KK factor, equivalent KK factor. The same thing works for uh, quantum groups. So I just wrote definition of KK, KKG. And actually, uh, the way you should read it, just take the definition of Kasparov and the one place where group elements show up, replace group elements by functions on the group. This is the only place where group elements show up. Okay. I just replaced group elements by functions on the group. And, it, uh, and, uh, and then you get the definition of KKG for quantum group. And I wrote standard thing. So cosic was trivial with all these commutators as zero. Uh, and uh, homotope, not homotope of psych is uh, the one you know. So equivalence, if you, you have two cycles are equivalent, they are homotopic after adding trivial cycles. They form a group, uh, they form a billion group and there is associative product, Kasparov product. And but somehow- so a, a, a and B are C, are C star algebras with a given action of the compact group G. This is precisely, G. with a given action with, with quantum group, locally compact quantum group G. It's the local compact quantum group here. Good, okay. Okay, so you have and, this factor KKG. And this, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is a very old definition going back to Bach and Scandalis. Yeah, it goes back to Bach and Scandalis, yes. Yeah, yeah, sure. But it's really Kasparov definition uh, yeah, yeah, sure. where you place G by C of G, right? So yeah. there's really not, not much difference. So. The, and actually the proofs of these facts, so, so all, all these proofs here, this construction, it is due to Bach and Scandalis, but it's not, uh, it's just being careful reading Kasparov, mm -hmm. which is not necessarily easy because uh, conspectus is not easy to read. 
right? But that's basically what happens here. And actually, the right way of constructing product is uh, actually not from conspectus, but there is a uh, con scandalous version of defining uh, Kasparov product, which works very nicely here, mm -hmm. there are, which avoids uh, at least part of analytic problems. But uses connections? What is the idea? Use connections, see? precisely. It's the point of using connections. Okay. And how about the green zilk theorem for the quantum which? Zilk? Which theorem? Green Zulk. We get to that, okay. as you can see, right? We get to that one. Uh, so, okay, by the way, so Green Zulk theorem in general will depend in what sense, but yes, it holds as such. But mm -hmm. uh, again, the proof is uh, actually the proof is more or less the same as for groups. There's not much difference in this respect, okay? Now, the reason that we are, I'm look, talking about is that this, I can, now I can look at the category of uh, G C-star algebras with KKG0 as morphisms. So I have the associative product, right? So I can use that to define category. So and finally, you have a category. Of so now I have a category, but it's not of, uh, not of quantum groups, right? Yes, of course. Yes. It's a category, it's kind of category of C-star algebras, but with, with KKG as morphisms, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, Richard, if it wouldn't be too much trouble, I know that Ralph was lecturing in Warsaw for weeks, maybe even longer, explaining to us all this um, stuff about triangles and categories, but I must admit that after, Eight years or so, I completely forgot. So, uh, if you would okay, so so what does in light of what are these exact triangles, triangle category? Uh, to have intuition. Do I have zigzags somewhere? No, I don't. No, no, I don't want that one. No, it's think of it this way. So KKG, so morphisms are KKG being triangulated. It means that uh, yeah, okay, maybe you want these triangles. Let's see. I need a, a page. Not now. No, I don't want to add. I need no. This? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. this I've got this category T, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. So I have two things. First of all, there's a shift by one. Which will take C star algebra a maps it to C0R tensor A. Ah, suspension. Okay. It's equivalence of self-equivalence category. It's self-equivalence because, because of both periodicity. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then exact triangle. So problem is that uh, I've got this element, I've got this KK element from A to B, right? Mm -hmm. It's KK element. So it's not yes. a star homomorphism, nothing. Yes. So yes. it doesn't make sense to say kernel and co-kernel. Yes. Right? So instead, I will try to construct, call it five, okay. I will try to construct uh, this exact triangle. Mm -hmm. So, okay, the way of easiest way of thinking of it is maybe let me write it here, right? So, so I have this A to B. Then I will go to this, that's my phi. And then I will shift things, right? So we'll go, I guess, let's, let's do it. Let's write it explicitly, right? Then I will go to suspension of A, exactly. to suspension of B, and so on. And there is this desuspension. So I can also go this, there is also this C, I C phi, S minus one phi, and so on. So this kind of long exact sequence, okay? I don't have kernel co-kernel for this one. I don't have kernel and co-kernel, but instead I've got this long exact sequence. So this mapping cone is kind of combination of both kernel and co-kernel of my map. And can you define it explicitly what this? So for CSR algebras, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, actually you can write down what it is in this case. So if you have element this phi in uh, say KK zero AB, mm -hmm. okay. <coughs> no, actually, the easy, better one is, uh, yeah. 
So then, then I can get out of it phi in suspension of phi in k k one, well, mm -hmm. suspension of a to b, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this is an extension, right? So this is something e maps to. No, I think I want suspension at the other end. That's right. Let me put suspension here, right? Okay, from e to a and double suspension of B, right? So that's my mapping code. This E. E, right? Mm -hmm. So remember, this is the same as B, essentially. Yes. And I have this A to B, and the degrees fit. You have to be careful degrees, right? So, so the point is that you look at... at uh, KK1, so the so really elements of KK1 are extensions, and then this is your extension. Okay, so your mapping cone is from B to suspension of A. It's extension of suspension of A by B. So that's how you construct that, right? You can also write down, there's also another way. So any KK element is actually given by a star homomorphism between appropriate uh, leaves of sister root, between equivalent sister algebras, KK mm -hmm. equivalent sister algebras. Mm -hmm. And for star homomorphism, just standard uh, mapping cone. Okay. Oh, that's, the one that's, you know. that's very, right? so, this is very intuitive, yes. Yeah. And and that's, uh, where are we? Which one was I worked with? This one? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that, so, uh, so triangulated category means that you have the shift and you have this mapping on construction mm -hmm. and some axioms. It's kind of, some of them are intuitive, some of them are slightly less intuitive, but kind of very natural axioms, which tell you that you can do some kind of uh, homological algebra, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Now, okay, I will, I, since we talk about Baum and we heard Paul, so, so, we are going to look at discrete quantum group gamma, its group C star algebra, and we somehow want its K theory, right? So the idea is to look at cross product A cross gamma and try to construct some elements in K theory. And the way of doing it is like, so kind of the way of doing is that I like and uh, some other people like, is this following. Okay, suppose that I've got a compact subgroup of gamma, so discrete. If gamma is discrete, then H is finite, H is torsion, mm -hmm. right? So what can I do? I can look at this part here, KKH C comma A, as you, you already asked uh, green Gilles theorem, yeah, yeah. that's isomorphic to K theorem of A cross H, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. On the other hand, to the induction, to get KK gamma from this one to this one, there is this descent of Kasparov, sorry. So go, going from KK gamma, you can go to KK, the, taking cross product with gamma. And now the point is of course that uh, so in here, because H is, uh, so G and gamma are the same, because H is fine, that is a compact or discrete subgroup of gamma, this contains one, this is a unit element. So it has a unit element, which gives you an element in K0 of C star H. So gives you an element here. That's the Green theorem. The Green theorem says that these two are the same. Okay, they are more equivalent actually. Okay, so class of unit here gives you element k in uh, k zero, hence gives you a map from here to here. So a way, um, and then I, I could have I didn't write R, but you can take you should take reduced here. Right, so the way of getting elements in this cross product is, well, basically I'm doing this 
construction, right? And what I can do is take, so now I will think about this one, this induced thing as a kind of projective object of, in my KK gamma category, projective in, or in, some, in some homological algebra sense. And each time I've got such a projective object, I get a map from here to here. So I can take project, take limit over these projective objects. For quantum group, it's not, it, remember, it's not necessarily induced. The, for quantum group, I won't have these compact subgroups, right? So, but, but I still have these projective objects and I get mapped from some projective limit of uh, this kind of things to K theory of A cross gamma. So this projective limit is what you call equivalent K homology. And the map is the, well, bank on the assembly map. The point is, of course, that this map becomes now a factorial, it becomes a natural transformation from this factor to this factor. I'll show you later how I can use it to say something very easy. And this is when you say limits, uh, what you are running is H, right? H, yeah. I would limit, yeah. For groups, it will be limit over H's. Yeah. For quantum group, it's a limit over things which look like uh, induced things. Yeah, so like with things which look. Instead of quantum yeah, subgroups. I don't, have quant I don't have quantum subgroups. Exactly, yeah. You but I have something which looks like a induction from quantum subgroup. I'll show you in a second what it is. Yeah, this quantum homogeneous spaces. Yeah, quantum homogeneous space, yes. Mm -hmm. Precisely. Mm -hmm. So this way you get the uh, assembly map. Okay, so let's see. So actually answer, rewriting this, this left side, so this, this thing, this picture here, right? So how? So there is a dual, uh, Takesaki Takai duality in for quantum groups becomes uh, by scandalous duality. So it's an equivalence between uh, two categories. So, so say gamma is my discrete quantum group, G is my compact quantum group, and taking cross product, reduce cross product gives, a, it's a natural transformation of sister algebra, of the categories of sister algebra perfection. It's a equivalence of categories. So instead of looking at this gamma algebra induced object here, I can look at the corresponding cross product here. Now, this cross product is uh, in KKG equivalent to five dimensional uh, G algebra, right? This was this. Uh... No, actually, this, this is really this Green Jules theorem, right? Yes. So, no, I won't here, right? It's really this statement here. Yeah. Okay. So uh, instead of looking at uh, G gamma picture, I can look at G picture. And now I know what torsion is. So torsion for discrete group, quantum group gamma, will be a fine dimensional G algebra. OK. Well, uh, there are two types of there is torsion and non-torsion. Uh, so permutation and not permutation type torsion. So the non-permutation type torsion will be if T is simple. So I've got simple finite dimensional G algebra, then this corresponds to a, at least non-permutation type torsion mm -hmm. for the discrete quantum group for the dual one, okay? And now I can do the same thing as I did here. So basically, basically going, so using, uh, if I use this one, basically doing something like this, so now I end up the following. So now we uh, use my machinery. I just need to know what happens when I look at this KKG T comma A, right? So, sorry, yeah. So this, this bit here, okay? So actually the important point here is that this is somehow continuous in A. So this, so K theory of this cross product, remember H is finite or compact. So 
k fear of this one is continuous in A as a factor. So maps direct sum to the direct sum of k theory. So I need the same result here. So what I really need is uh, if I have this fine dimensional G algebra, now G is my compact quantum group. I need to know that this factor is continuous. So maps direct sums of sister algebra, countable direct sums of sister algebras to direct sum of abelian groups. So it's called, T is called compact object as in the language of category. And of course helps if we can compute it, right? Because if we can compute it, we can compute this one, so we can compute this one. So let's say something. So yes, so, so there is this theorem of Arano and Skalski, in general, not only non-permutation torsion, but these fine dimensional geogebras are compact objects. Uh, I will explain to you how it looks, actually it's very natural for these uh, non-torsion things, which is the following one. So suppose I've got this torsion here. So T is a torsion. So T is, a, I've got coaction on T implemented by some projective interrepresentation. So I've got a picture like this. Now I can use T to define two functors. I can define one from KKG to KKG omega. Remember omega, I've got a finite, I've got a projective unit representation, which is fine dimensional. So my cosaico is a, a finite type. So twisting G by omega is a compact quantum group. So I've got two quantum groups, G and G omega. Now, the, these two categories are actually equivalent. So the equivalence is fairly simple. You, one way you tensor with, uh, well, you tensor with T opposite and tensor with T. Going back and forth means that you tensor with T tensor T opposite, which is actually endomorphisms of T. So going back and forth is a Morita equivalence. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so these two categories are, so this is really equivalent to these two categories. So now the simplest, easiest thing to do is uh, if I got a finite dimensional simple G sister algebra T and I've got one which uh, has trivial action. So what I can do is just first of all, use this equivalence to go from C tensor T comma A to C A tensor T opposite. And now use the fact that this is G omega's compact quantum group. So I can use the uh, green Gilles theorem and to go here. And hence, this is a compact object. More than that, I can actually compute the result, right? So this tells me how to construct my k-homology functor. And why do we need uh, this t to be simple? Now, so for this argument, I need it to be simple because of that. Kind of, right? No, it's kind of because the proof is slightly tricky. So this equivalence of categories kind of uses the fact that T is simple. Uh, mm. uh, it's, uh, what's the word? In general, you have to go to quantum groupoids instead of quantum groups. Uh -huh. You have to do, you, you have to do something. It's not very deep, but, but you have to do something. Okay, so that's something we are trying to, to finish writing up. So you, because, uh, because in, in general you have, so problem is remember this fact that any projective representation is uh, implemented, right? <clears throat> now we don't have, so meaning projective, so projective representations action on, well, it's uh, on something like K, right? Now we have action on direct, uh, instead we have an action on direct sum of copies of K. Right, so I need to know that this one is implemented. For that, I need to, to do something, okay? That, that's the simplest to show up. But that's in this particular proof. That's the fact that we use projective representations here. Okay, goody. I want to, uh, well, there's a reason why I bother to do it because, well, there's a result that I can, uh, so 
I can give you a proof of something, which is actually useful. So uh, this factoriality and this, this abstract nonsense, why is it useful? So, and, and the very apropos subject, C-star algebras of UCT class, so satisfying the universal coefficient theorem. I will not write down the universal coefficient theorem, but there is a, is a relatively easy statement where, which you can check. That appropriate notion of UCT is the following. So A satisfies UCT if it does not see C star algebras for which K theory is zero. In KK, we are still in the KK category. I remember we, we have, have this KK category and C star algebra satisfies UCT if it does not see things for, with trivial K theory. For such C star algebras, you can prove a UCT universal coefficient theorem. It's not very difficult. Now, the obvious example is, so first of all, an obvious example is C, right? So KK C comma B is equal to K pure of B, right? So, uh, Obviously, C does not see algebras for which K theory is zero, right? Because it is zero, right? Now, the point is that if you use this kind of uh, definition, it's factorial definition. So this UCT class is actually what's called the localizing subcategory of KK, meaning it's close and deforming uh, Kanta Wutar exams. It's closed under construct forming uh, mapping cones, and it's closed under taking uh, uh, what's the word? Retracts. It's automatic from this definition. But the thing is closed under taking countable direct sum, retracts, and mapping cones. So that's called localizing subcategory. Since we have the C sitting in there, the whole uh, subcategory generated by C will be there. The space subcategory generated by C is the one called uh, the bootstrap category. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the bootstrap category is localizing subcategory of KK, which is generated by trivial one C, trivial element C. There might be more elements in the UCT class than just these bootstrap ones, but uh, that's uh, nobody knows okay, whether, whether it's the same or not. And so in, this... in, 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 in general, forget this special case. In general, uh, what do you mean by localizing subcategory? So close and the direct countable direct sums, taking mapping cones and retracts. Okay. That's localizing subcategory. Hmm. So that's the things which you can do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's uh, this uh, UCT class. So let's prove something, right? I'm going to prove it for you. Suppose I've got a quantum group and suppose that it satisfies strong bump con conjecture. So strong bump con conjecture really means that this, uh, so remember we, this assembly map was constructed here, right? We had this assembly map here. And strong bound con conjecture would say that this is equivalence of categories, meaning that uh, every cake, every gamma C star algebra is actually equivalent to a projective one. So, in, in kind of classical language, I have it here somewhere, right? Yeah, in classical language, uh, if you do have a gamma element and the gamma element is equal to one, then your quantum group satisfies a strong bound con conjecture. But uh, that's kind of, uh, you don't always know that you have gamma element. Yeah, but I, I'm but, confused. So, 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 uh, so strong bound con conjecture requires gamma element to be one. I, I'm confused. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. 
Baumkorn conjecture says that action of gamma element on K pure is one, right? which is different. Mm -hmm. And here just have it equal to one. Right, because remember, gamma element is something which sits in K, K gamma, C comma C, okay? Yeah. And this acts on K pure, of, so it acts on K pure or any cross product uh, like this. A cross reduced gamma, just X. And actually X, uh, its image is a range of assembly map, right? So Baumkorn conjecture says that it acts as identity. Strong Baum conjecture says it is actually equal to one. And actually basically all the proofs I know really prove that gamma is equal to one, that's another story. Um, Okay. I think it's true, actually, yes. So this is a, but, but it's, it's stronger than bomb conjecture. Okay, so suppose okay. this holds, right? Then it, uh, you get the following theorem. If I've got a separable sister algebra, which satisfies UCT, then also cross product satisfies UCT. Hello, Mike. Hey, yeah, uh, there's a rain today. Okay, so let me give a proof, right? So it's really straightforward. And I, I wrote it in terms of groups because I'm too lazy instead of quantum groups. So suppose I've got a discrete group. Now, strong uh, Baumkorn conjecture tells me that every gamma sister algebra is a uh, certain subcategory generated by things of this type. So C0 gamma mod H tensor B, where H is torsion, finite dimensional sub subgroup, and B has trivial action. Okay. Now, assuming that A is a, uh, in this localizing sub, that assuming that A is a, in the UCT class, this means that, well, this is just abelian, so this really means that this is in UCT class. So this is a, that this will be localizing subcategory generated by C. So anything like this is in the localizing subcategory generated by just this factor, C0 gamma mod H. Hence, cross product in the, is in the localizing subcategory generated by C0 gamma mod H cross gamma which is fine, uh, more equivalent to find the muscles is algebra. Hence, the boot subclass. <coughs> so if you have a, anything and you satisfying UCT, a group which satisfies strong Baumkorn conjecture, cross product satisfies UCT. So examples are actually all the examples where you have Baumkorn work. So that's, that's, that's why this uh, abstract, uh, abstract nonsense notions are useful. Okay. And by the way, this shows up somehow in uh, modern classification of, of sister algebras, this kind of questions. And, and, and wait, when you say Baumkorn, you actually mean Baumkorn with coefficients, right? Sure, I said strong Baumkorn, yes. Yeah, yeah, bomb cone of coefficient, but not just bomb cone of coefficient, strong bomb cone of coefficient. Mm -hmm. Bomb cone of co coefficient says that the action here is as a by identity. Yeah. yeah. On this one. Okay. Right? Strong bomb cone, but it is actually one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just to uh, round up. So we were talking about this uh, projective representations, this twisted compact quantum group. So there is a uh, Peter Weil theorem in this case. So called twisted Peter Weil theorem. So remember when we start with compact quantum group and the Tuko cycle, and now it does not have to be measurable. The corresponding group C star algebra, well, well, it should be measurable, but it should be of finite type. Then that corresponding twisted group sister order has the well-known form. So a direct sum of irreducible representations of H tensor H dual. 
tape when given this omega twisted action of a group on anything, there is the dual action of a dual quantum <clears throat> group such that this Takesaki Takai duality holds. Okay. And then there is what's called the Packard Rayburn trick. I think it should be Slapnov. He predates them by uh, something like 40 years, but doesn't matter. It's called in sister algebra, it's called Packard Rayburn trick. So if you start with omega twisted action, then A tensor compacts has untwisted action. So you can untwist the action on A tensor compacts. And the way you untwist it, you just use this double cross product. So then G, I'm sorry. I thank you anyway, but so G acts on this one again. Okay. But without twist, untwisted action. So Pavel Kaspchak is here, right? So you use this fact to construct uh, the formations of algebras with groups, quantum groups acting on them. If you've got a group algebra with quantum group acting on it with some cosycle, you can use something like this to deform the product on the group, on the algebra. It reminds me something. <laughs> yes, it should remind you of something, yes. I think that's it for today. Okay, thank you so much uh, for a very interesting talk. Um, yeah. Let me find the, the icon of uh, clapping hands. And uh, yeah, here it is. So wait a second. Reactions, clapping hands. Okay, you got it. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, reactions, now, questions, right? Yeah, now we can proceed with um, uh, questions. We have plenty of time uh, for questions. So who would like to start? It was too much. Magnus, Magnus, go ahead. Uh, yep, well, wait, let me stop sharing the screen so I can see you guys. Yes, and I can see. Yeah, Magnus. Yeah. So, is there an instance where the left side has been computed for quantum? Where? What was computed there? The, the left hand side in Baum Com. Oh, sure. SUQ2. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? You, you know the torsions of groups, right? Right. Sure. SUQ2 okay. and uh, so the dual of, right? So, so the discrete one. That's, right. The, right? that's what you want, really, right? Mm -hmm. Right, okay. And that's due to Christian Foft, right? That's Christian, yes. And, uh, and hence for some of these quantum permutation groups. Mm -hmm. Also, because there are some more equivalent, there are some, some equivalents of a category categories of actions, right? Okay. No, you actually, you know, I think, uh, you know pretty much about torsion of this classical uh, Voronoi subquantum groups. That will be uh, Makoto, Yamashita. Mm -hmm. but, but I mean, has left hand side been computed in a case where one doesn't know that much more? Like. No, not really. Where no. there's a chance of using it to compute the right inside. Not that I know of, right? <clears throat> I'm afraid. Actually, you would know because you did some of these things yourself as well. So. Okay. Tomek? Just unmute yourself. Yes, I have a question. Uh, if you have yep. a localizing subcategory, then uh, you can form a localizing factor, some Balsy localization. Yeah. Uh, what does it mean uh, to torsion in your sense? What, what kind of operation you obtain relative to torsion? No, no, but it was, uh, if you want to think about it, then uh, assembly map is uh, is the Bauhaus field localization. Okay. So, so mm -hmm. it's uh, you localize with 
Okay, what you do, you look at... Uh, So you think this way, so projective objects will be ones which do not see torsion. And then mm -hmm. uh, they form localizing subcategory and you take the quotient, mm. right? Okay. And that's your assembly map. Perfect. Thank you very much. So, Anybody else, Adam? <laughs> Don't force. No, no I, I don't have any questions. Don't force. I was saying to ask that everything questions. was clear, but I need to listen to this talk once again, I think so. Yeah. Well, uh, the, uh, these notes will be on the net. Yeah. Right. So, so, yeah, yeah, of no, course. So please send me the right? slides. Just send me the slides and I'll, so, I, sure, I'll, I'll send you the slides. It's not a problem. Right away. Um, so, let me share the screen and, and, and I, 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 I really would like to understand it in detail. Okay, so you should now be able to see my whiteboard. You see my whiteboard, I presume? Yes. Yes. I, and yes, and, and uh, of course, many people here know it, but uh, let me recall it anyway. So in, 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 in the usual setting of uh, Hofgra theory, when you have, say, a, an algebra with a collection of a Hof algebra, so that's H is a Hof algebra of the Kuiper space, and uh, while well, you say that, that this collection is, is cleft, uh, if you now have a map from H to A, uh, which uh, has basically the, the, the property that it's uh, collinear. So, so if you call uh -huh. it, uh, typically we, we call it gamma, whatever. I somehow used to call uh -huh. it gamma, but yeah. shouldn't be confused with your gamma element. There's nothing to do. Uh, so we, we basically are saying that, all right, uh, if I, take gamma of an H and apply the coaction, okay? Then it's, then it's the same as just having uh, a gamma tensor identity composed with a product and applied to H. So just write it with virus. And we also need to assume that gamma um, is unital. So that's important, yeah. gamma of one yeah, is okay, one. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is called a cleaving map. And then you can conclude that this coaction, let me call it delta, yeah, I forgot to write it here, is cleft. Um, and uh, the, the, we, we just, uh, the, the way with this cocycle is, is Yeah, A uses unital, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is, is, is actually very simple. Uh, you uh, measure, the cocycle measures the failure of uh, gamma of being an algebra map. So, ah, yeah. sorry, I forgot most important, most important condition. So, so, so to have it cleft, of course, that's, that's not enough. Uh, that's just nothing. Uh, uh, this is maybe flatness, okay? But, but this is very essential that gamma is convolution vertical. So there exists a convolution inverse. So this means you have a map such that using Swedish notation, you have gamma inverse H1, uh, gamma H2, and this is just a co-unit of H, okay? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and this is this is simply the convolution product that you have for any map from a co-algebra to an algebra, sure. you have a convolution product, and in particular from, from a Hobbes algebra to an algebra. And so the existence of, of, of gamma inverse, mm -hmm. it's also a map from H to A and satisfying sure. this property. And of course, also the other way around when you put gamma here, gamma oh, yeah. here inverse here, it also must be a unit. Yeah. So that's the convolution invertibility, uh, uh, but, but, but the gamma still need not be uh, an algebra homomorphism. Of course, when gamma is an algebra homomorphism, convolution invertibility is for free, because yeah. then simply gamma inverse is equal to gamma composed with the antipode. Okay. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. That, that's just obvious yeah, yeah. because you define yeah, yeah. the antipode yeah, yeah. convolution yeah. inverse. So, so, yeah. so, but, but you have lots and lots of non-trivial examples uh, that uh, you have a convolution inverse without being an algebra homomorphism. And here you can write this cocycle. So that's your omega. So let me let me write it yeah. as, as, as yeah. omega. And and I think 
okay, I I'm, I don't have it right uh, in my no, mind. No, 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 Piotr, yeah, but no? think, think this way. So you have this, uh, basically, so uh, what was I was saying, but you have this uh, map from, uh, you have two maps from A to A tensor H, right? You go from here to, to where? To, to... No, no, you have two maps from A to... Uh... No, no, so you have two maps from A to A tensor H. I go from A... To A tensor H, right? A. Tensor H, right? And one is one delta, of, of course. One is delta and the other one is identity tensor one. And the other one is identity tensor, tensor one. one. Okay. Right, yes. Yes, and and uh, what's the word and uh, and you're asking whether they are equivalent or not, basically. In what sense? Um, I'm not quite sure how then to understand your map from H to A, but the cosaic you get cosaic if you just uh, what's the word? Mm. I I can write you the cosaic. That's that's uh, this is what, what I was just trying to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm I'm trying to remember it. So so basically, uh, you want to measure how far you you have gamma say H K. So if, if gamma H K were an algebra homomorphism, it would be gamma H. Uh, uh, gamma k, and and now what you do is 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 the following. Uh, you, I think, if I remember correctly, what you do, you take. Wait, wait, Piotr. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Uh, suppose uh, H is just a group, functions on the group, right? Yes. Yes. There's so no what problem. you was so your no so gamma is just a map from uh, functions on the group to algebra. Correct. Yes. What Correct, is, but, be, is, but because that's not what is a map. What is this map? Uh, well, I mean, uh, you, you can have very simple examples. For instance, if you if you take um, um, if you take the the antipodal action of uh, Z two on. Uh, hey, no, 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 no. I thought, you know, no, I don't need example. No. I don't want examples. I, I've got I've got concrete case. So I'm supposed to have a map from from the functions of a group. To algebra, yeah, right? Exactly. So it's an element of uh, yeah tensor product, right? C of G tensor A. Yep. So what uh, what which function? So what does it mean? By the, what kind of function do I have? As an yeah, example. That, uh, that's this is exactly my question. How you translate these conditions? I have these conditions for a map from H to A, but I agree that you can look at a map from H to A, uh, H to A as, as as some element of a tensor product. And now I'd like to see. Uh, it was implementation that, that you are talking yeah. about, and and uh, I, I don't quite. No, no. See. So, for example, if a if if uh, if c of h is commutative, uh, no. I have no, an c example. of h is non-commutative, and a is commutative. You don't really have any such maps, right? I have a class of examples. If, mm, yeah, no, no, no. This, this, this map, you always have such a map. Uh, uh, of course, if, if your correction is cleft, of course, you, you, it, it might happen that the correction is not cleft, so you don't have such a map. But, but, but if your correction is cleft, uh, then you really have honest uh, map, but it's not an algebra homomorphism, okay? Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, uh, what, what I remember is that the way you get a cocycle in, in Hofgarwa theory is, is that this is going from here to correction invariance. That, that, that's that's a map, and you get it get it from uh, gamma. I believe in the following way. Uh, I think that you just multiply it here and give me gamma inverse. So so something like this. Something like and, this, right? Yeah. Yeah, and and then of course here I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean it is so so this 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 should give you, you. You can see. Yeah, you can prove. You can prove that this element, which a priori is an element of A. Uh, you can prove that in fact it's uh, invariant under the coaction. So this sits in the coaction invariant subalgebra. Mm -hmm. And 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 then then this is your your, your omega of H okay. That's that's how yeah. you get from a, from a cleaving map. I, I, I have I have this uh, two cycle. Okay. 
okay? And, and uh, so that's no problem for me. But now how do I get uh, uh, your unitary implementation, what not? So I take what? Now I take my A to be B of H, now in the sense of Hilbert space. For right? example, right, yeah. And, and uh, what, what's next? How do I get these unitaries and so on? I, I don't see it. If you could write it down, that would be, you'd make me very happy. I, I have to think about that. I, I, didn't, I didn't think about it this way. I will have to check. Mm -hmm. So, but I will try to find out. So. Okay. Okay, I, I, I'm sure it works. I mean, you wrote this paper with Kenny, so I'm certain. Yeah, no, no, no. There's no, there's no discussion. It's not a problem yeah. whether it works or not, right? So uh, it's it, question it, to translate it for your language. Right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's. Uh, this is, this is one thing which bothers me, and, 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 and this, this question um, uh, about the, the a cleaving map is, it, is actually interesting. Ludwig, is Ludwig still around? Oh, yeah, no, 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 it's an obvious one. It's a map from uh, G to uh, yeah, the implementation map, of course. Think of its map from C star G to, uh, well, whatever A, right? So, so you implement your, automor your group elements by uh, conjugation by something. Yeah, but I still don't, okay, that, 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 that's fine. I can take this H to be C of press, um, G, right? Yeah. Um, and and, and, and I, I, I just kept such a funny map, this is B of H, and this is, a, well, co-action invariant, so action invariant. And, and I, I don't see what was the relationship between such a map uh, which is my omega, so maybe I should call it lowercase omega, and and uh, your capital omega. I, I don't see it. I'm, I'm sure it, it, it exists, and and then uh, well, you have it, but uh, and also I have no problem with believing that if you just are able to translate it, you will of course have this uh, cosine conclusion satisfied because. After all, what you wrote was just conjugation by unitary, so it, it must satisfy uh, natural algebraic cosmic conditions. But but I, I don't quite see at the level of you know spaces, domains, codomains, uh, how these two things match. So this is what what bothers me. I, I don't understand. And and the, this question of, of having a cleaving map is actually not so. Uh, stupid because uh, for starters uh, it, it, it makes sense classically. I mean, you can have a non-trivial cleaving map between commutative sister algebras, and 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 it is non-trivial, and uh, you, you you have a cleaving map for for a natural coaction, and and the sort of principal bundle which says behind is not trivial. Uh, this is with Ludwig we wrote it in a paper uh, ages mm -hmm. ago uh, that that, that yeah. if you want to have such an example. I just take the antipodal action of, of Z2 on a circle, and uh, this is definitely a non-trivial free action, but uh, it is cleft. And this is cleft in exactly the sense we were just uh, discussing. And, and uh, it... uh, Okay, Piotr, sorry, my problems. I do have to go now. Okay. okay. Unfortunately, but I will try to find out. I will try to give you an answer. Okay. Okay. So, 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 so in this case, uh, uh, yeah, um, I understand that there are no other questions for for the show. Hope not. <laughs> if you have, a, if you have and, other Andrew, questions, you, Andrew, that, Andrew, you just turned up. So, uh, now that but if you have questions, better do it. What's the word? Uh, um, yeah, Andre, a bit late. No, 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 better no, do no it question, per email. No question. <laughs> no questions. No, no questions. No questions. Okay, guys. So in this case, let's thank uh, let's thank Richard again. Where, where am I? I cannot see my mm -hmm. icon. Uh, thank you so much. This is a very very interesting topic. Of of uh, where is my? Uh, I have to stop sharing. Of of a Baumcon conjecture for mm. quantum groups. So, yes, Paul. <laughs> so, so 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 thank you very much uh, for for bringing it up, uh, and uh, we. Uh, we have our next talk it will be from the United States uh, with Shang Tang. 
and uh, I think that it's about uh, contour and character and, and stuff like this. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So, Richard, thank mm -hmm. you one more time. Okay. And welcome. See you. See you. In Thanks week. for having me. Bye bye. Our and see you guys. Bye, Hi, Laszlo. Bye, Hi, Richard. Bye bye. Bye. I stop recording. Okay. Grazie. Ciao.